I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to dye a sort of watercolory kind of yarn on some stroll fingering weight yarn using some red and pinkish purple colors of acid dyes. Today we're going to dye 300 grams of Knit Picks stroll fingering weight yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and the yarn has pre-soaked in just some plain tap water for a little over an hour. I just added eight cups of water with three tablespoons of white vinegar to this yarn, and we're going to start heating it up before we start adding any color. I'm working on my electric hot plate today, which doesn't provide the most overall even and consistent heat. The burners are different sizes and sometimes will be hot in the middle and cooler on the sides, but we're going to go for it. Today we're going to be using some older dye stocks of some pink and purple colors. And I'm starting with some fluorescent fuchsia. Uh, this is a beautiful, bright, almost neon pink. And I am adding it in lines. And I'm just going to poke it through a little bit. Now this is a color that tends to take a long time to strike. And so it's one that when we go and check to see how set things are before flipping, probably won't have set completely. I also have a red, this is Cherry Bomb, which is a very beautiful red color. And you can see because of the amount of acid that we have in here already, some of the color is striking fast. But if I come in pretty quickly, we are able to move some of it through, which I may not be doing for the whole time we're dying this, but just for starting, um, it's nice to get some larger splotches with intention. And the final color today is the most pigmented one, and this is Cabernet. And I remember with this color trying to make a pastel at one point, and I realized like you need very, very little of it. A little bit goes a long way. And this color is probably gonna overtake our entire design. I do also have a little bit of some purple pop, but I might wait to bring that in until after we have flipped our yarn. And so once we flip it, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more random with our color placement. Right now I've done some fairly like repeating bands that I'm pushing through a little bit. Uh, but as I flip, I might do more diagonals and maybe we won't press the colors through every time. But sometimes I just like to see what the colors want to do and how they want to behave. And now I'm gonna add more of this Cabernet here over by these zip ties, just squirting on a bunch and we're gonna move it through uh, with a metal spoon. And I like to use a metal spoon to check to see how much dye we've added, how much more we may need. And one of the reasons why I'm deciding to add some heavy onto either end is because sometimes underneath on these edges, that is where we end up with a lot of white left behind. So, Ooh, I'm trying to decide if I want to layer things more right now, but I'm actually thinking I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. Um, I'm sort of trying to wash down some of that color, but I'm going to let things sit for at least 10 minutes and then we'll try to flip it. Oh, that fuchsia is actually kind of striking a little faster than I thought, but then we will flip it and start adding more color to the other side without touching it as much. It's been a little over 10 minutes and all right, you know what? We can do a little check first. Okay, the Cabernet is going to be the one that's likely to spread, I think. There's a lot of Cabernet. Our red and our pink have uh, done more striking uh, than the Cabernet has, but the Cabernet is also on the ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the yarn and shift. And actually, there's not that much color that was left down below, but that is gonna sort of soften the way things are. And so I'm going to try to have this so that way we see more of the white yarn and less of what has already received color. Uh, and we're gonna layer these colors on 
to our yarn. And we may have some more flips, but let's get to it. My intent going into this side is to try to not move the colors around very much and to let the spreading happen as I'm adding the colors on. I think that it would be fun to do more of dyeing yarn one way on one side and then doing something a bit different on the flip. Uh, I don't know entirely how I feel about that at the moment, but that is something that it would be fun to do more of in the future. I added on color until I was happy with it on the side and then waited five to 10 minutes before flipping the yarn to add more color until I was satisfied with the total amount of color that I had on our yarn. And then I added more water and vinegar and let everything heat set for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes since I added the water and the water maybe has a hint of some pink in it, but most of the color is in the yarn. So I'm gonna turn off the heat Leave the yarn in the pan to cool for a while, and then we, once it's cool, we will go ahead and wash the yarn. Let's wash our yarn. I'm not really seeing maybe a hint of pink in the pan. And if there's a hint of pink in the pan and I didn't squeeze out the liquid, there may be a hint in the water here, but I am not yet concerned. So let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay, yeah, I'm seeing actually some a hint of some purple but I'm not worried given that uh, what we had left in the pan but now let's add some soap and hold our breath a little bit as we fill this up well so far it doesn't seem to be getting any worse and so that is always good and in fact well Squeeze out the liquid. Yeah, that's about the same, which is good. It would be bad if the color got deeper. So I'm gonna continue to rinse this and I will check back in in a moment. Okay, a few rinses later and we are looking good. So I'm now gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. And I will be completely honest, when I started this project, I didn't really think that I would try to touch and move the colors through on one side and then not the other, but that's where we ended up. And I love the combination of both larger patches of color. I'm looking at you, Cabernet, but also then the smaller pops that we have from our red, from our purple pop, uh, and the way that the fuchsia pink has spread out all over the yarn. This has resulted in a colorway that might have more pooling than had I not touched the colors and the yarn at all. And that's because we do have some larger sections of color that in somewhat repeating way would show up. This isn't yarn for planned pooling. The lengths of the colors vary and things like that. But uh, I really, really like how this turned out. And I think I'm gonna need to do some more touch on the first side and don't touch on the flip because I'm very intrigued by having the more long patches of color interspersed with a speckly section. And this speckly section came about from the squeeze bottles and the fact that I had a fair amount of acid in there, so the color started to strike pretty quickly where I added it. If I had started with less acid in there overall, the colors as I used the squirt bottles to apply them would have spread more. Or if I had been doing this technique on a non-superwash yarn, the colors also would have spread a bit more. And so, you can get a speckled effect on yarn because these little patches here, um, some of them will only knit up and be visible in like one stitch. You can get that effect without using dry powder. What dry powder speckles allows you to do is get those super fine, like tip of a pencil level speckles. But ultimately it comes down to personal preference and what you like to see knit up. A lot of times when I dye variegated yarn, I really try to twist it up in the same way because I like seeing consistency. And these two are a little similar. This one, 
you know, I ended up with a, one of the dark Cabernet patches along the bottom. These skeins will have some similarities when knit up, but because of the way that they were positioned and just different randomness of this technique, there likely are dye lot differences between them. And because of that randomness versus being a more variegated, I therefore didn't have like a set point where I would start twisting from to try to have the most consistency between my twisted skeins. And there are videos where I will have really awesome examples of this coming up later this year. So please make sure that you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos, and you can join to become a channel member and get loyalty badges next to your name in live chats and in the comments. Plus you can use some really fun Chemnitz emotes, including one of my favorites, the do not touch tongs. Because whenever I am live streaming, a lot of times I want to touch and move the yarn and spread the colors through. And those of you who have joined me often are telling me, no, don't touch, don't stir, just let it do what it's going to do. And so we had to have a no stirring, a don't touch emote. The channel memberships start as low as $1 a month and there's a video when you click on the join button so you can learn more about the perks. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.